It's your time to shine with Presenter Search on 3 and Orbit Gum. The top six competing are marketer Dean Woodman, comedian Nathaniel Davids, model Jamie Lee Domberg, student Tato Mashweshwe, graduate Kutle Adams and singer Jared Ricketts. We're on our way to Eswatini. I'm quite excited. I didn't think I would get this far. We are in the top six. This is surreal, man. It's going to be an adventure and it's more time together. First time out of the country and I'm pretty excited. I mean, finally, I get to put a stamp on my passport. These people are crazy. They are so funny. And it's just nice to get to know them outside of the competition. I'm very excited about the road trip. Myself, Jared and Kutle has an amazing connection. We feed off each other's energy and we really just have a good vibe together. So like every great road trip, we get to stop, we get to get some food, stretch our legs. I definitely need to top up with the refreshments because it's a long four hours. Oh, my Nathaniel bra is there. I mean, we're going to go some romance now. we got more than just two or three days with each other. So this is exciting. Bye. 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 Coffee? Bye. Got the coffee. Shades? Got the shades. Smile? Smile, we guys. Check. 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 Nice. The Kingdom of Eswatini, previously known as Swaziland, sits on the doorstep of South Africa. One of the last remaining monarchies in the world, this is a land filled with rich history, tradition and culture. We make it to Eswatini and this place looks like, I don't know, pure heaven. There is beautiful landscapes everywhere you look. It's luscious, amazing. Eswatini is so beautiful. It's my 27th country. I really, really just want to explore the entire place. There's a rural feel to it, and I'm not a stranger to rural areas because I'm a rural boy. So this is going to be a piece of cake when it comes to challenges. <laughs> We arrive and this place is phenomenal. I mean, it's like I've been taken away to some place that's in between mountains, valleys. There's a whole river running down to this place. We arrive and I'm just looking around at this beautiful landscape. It's absolutely immaculate and we are welcomed by our very kind host and I'm so stoked and excited to see what's next. These two people come from the staircase to greet us and I feel like we are around royalty. You know, they're wearing their traditional gear. You can feel that now we have arrived. San Bonani. Nijani. Swatini. Welcome to the beautiful kingdom of Eswatini. Are you here for the first time? Yes. Wow, this is a beautiful kingdom and everyone that comes to Eswatini is regarded as his majesty's guest. So please enjoy the real experience here in Eswatini. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> Our beautiful host of Eswatini is welcoming us with such a pure and genuine smile. You can really see that they want us to be there and we're all excited to be part of this journey of Presenter Search on 3. Walking up the mountain and I see green grass and Leanne. All I know is when you see her, someone's going home or it's a new challenge. She looks beautiful, but we know it is game time. This is not a holiday. It's time to get to work and I'm sure the challenges are about to begin. Hey, contestants. Hey, you looking good? <laughs> well, it's been a long road to get to this point of the competition. So, congratulations for making it to the top six. <laughs> Give yourselves a big round of applause. However, you're not in this beautiful country just to be tourists. Expressive presenters are often sent all around the world to present travel segments. For this challenge, you'll be taking in the tradition and the cultures of Eswatini. That's not all. As part of this challenge, you'll be split into two teams. We in teams? My word. I did not see this coming. How is it going to work? Are we working together? Are we separate? Is the entire team going home? In front of you are six orbit envelopes containing the teams that you'll be split into. Contestants, grab an envelope. Please tell me Nathaniel's on my side. I look to my left and I look to my right. I'm with Dean. That's my homeboy. I am crossing fingers to be with maybe Kutle or Jared or Jamie Lee, maybe. 
Hey, I see my team number and I look to my right. Kutle has got the same number. I hear Jamie screaming. I realise this is my group. <laughs> the Legally Blondes. I mean, Jamie's naturally bubbly and Jared is funny and inquisitive. Jared, I'm a bit worried about. Very over the top, extra, but it could actually work. I'm with Nathaniel and Uncle Dean. <laughs> what an interesting combination. Thing is, we've never worked together before and I, I don't know how this is going to turn out. This is definitely going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. He's like a pocket rocket. So I don't know where he might bounce off, but I, I get good vibes. Team One, you will be exploring the arts of Eswatini at the country's hub of creativity, House on Fire. Discover we're going to be doing art and what very few people know about me, that art is actually my vibe. Team Two, you will be experiencing the culture and traditions of Eswatini at Mantenga Cultural Village. I'm excited about the cultural part of the challenge. I have traveled before, so it's going to be very interesting to see how I link my real life with now my presenting life. At each location, there are three activities. As a team, you will decide who is doing what. Good luck, or as they say in Siswati, in Geni Fisela in Tlantla. <laughs> Present to search on three, the Expresso edition continues after the break with the Eswatini Challenge as Team One explores the art at House on Fire. <laughs> Welcome back to Present to Search on Three, the Expresso edition coming to you from the beautiful kingdom of Eswatini. The top six were divided into two groups and now it's time for Team One to take on their challenge at House on Fire. Walking on the grass, coming up to House on Fire, no matter where you look, left, right, up, down, these different pieces, I mean, it's insane. And built from the hands of the people that trade there. Welcome to House and Fire, guys. House and Fire is a cultural hub of artistic and architectural styles that come together to create the magic and fire that makes it undoubtedly one of the best and most magical and eclectic venues that the continent has to offer. Today, you guys will get to experience the different hues that make the fire as explosive and magical as it is. You are going to experience weaving at Bomage Rural Projects. You're going to get to see how carving is done and how all the art comes together. And we've got a special treat for you guys. One of the country's biggest exports is here today, but hush hush, no names mentioned yet. Let's go check it out. <laughs> now we have to decide who's doing what. And I hear there's a big musician that's gonna be coming. So music, vibe, that's just really me. So I'm definitely taking that one. Okay, so we've got the carving and the weaving. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do the carving. It goes with my surname, Woodman. That makes sense, you have the hands for it. Guys, guys, Whoa. Ow. I I'm gonna do the music. I'm here for the vibe, I'm here for, for just that, the music. You go. You Oh, yeah, cute. yeah, yeah, you got that. I guess um, I'll be weaving. Dean is doing uh, the carving because of his surname. Tato is doing an interview, something to do with music. And I'm left with weaving. Unbelievable. Where did you come from? From yeah. somewhere behind. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, so Woodman, we've got the music. I've got the weaving. The let's do this, Okay, boys. let's it's go. Good. Awesome it's stuff. Good. They left me hanging. Uh, did you hurt right. your head? Are you fine? fine. Are you fine? fine. No, tell me. No, it's okay. okay. I'm here for you. Can I'm we go, please? Okay. We decided to give ourselves a team name and we called our team Team Washa. Reason because we are at House on Fire. So fire, Mlilo, you burn, Washa. Team Washa. Yeah. Team Washa. But it's fire, hey. guys. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you guys need to do an opening link for the story. The director tells us we got to do a link together. I'm actually really excited about this because the energy between us is excellent. So far, so good. I'm wondering why did I deprive myself this feeling of getting to know this incredible gentleman? Discuss it, think about it, make it work. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Team, team Washa! Washa. Ah, yes. <laughs> You're gonna burn. Don't make it awkward, Charles. Don't fire. make it awkward, Charles. Just go with it. Come on, man. It's fire. fire. Okay, come, fire. come, come, come. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, cool. We're about to prepare for our opening link. Uh, I'm nervous. Uh, we got to split this up, but you don't want to make it too long. Got to keep it short, concise. And we want to add some flair in there, a little bit of fun. Bushfire. Fire bush. 
Is House, of fire. Fire. House, House of Fire. House of Fire. <laughs> <laughs> the bush is on fire. House the house that's on fire. We really want to make sure that everybody has got a chance to speak, and we want to keep it as organic, and we want to keep it, it must sound like a conversation, not presentary. Action. A mere four hours drive from the city of Johannesburg, and you'll find yourself at the border to the kingdom of Iswatini. That's right, people, and today we're at the House on Fire, where art is not only seen, but experienced, right? Exactly, Nathaniel. Here, art is a way of life, and we cannot wait to take it on it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was spot on. I felt that we had energy, the flow, that was... Nathaniel! I really liked it. What? I was Come taking it all in. I re that was a great shot, guys. That was amazing. I was just taking it all in. Up first, I am doing weaving. I've never done weaving before, so I'm very keen to get hands-on, weave myself, but also find out the story behind what's being woven. Melissa, I can't help but recognize how beautiful this is. How does something like this end up looking as gorgeous as this? Well, thank you so much. We work with amazingly talented weavers, over 780 women artisans from all over Eswatini. And yeah. it starts out in the mountains of Eswatini where the Lutinzi grass grows wild. Yeah. The women harvest the grass above the roots so that it can regrow. And we buy the grass from the women and bring it here to our workshop where it gets dyed and dried. We then take that grass back out to the homesteads and provide the women with the materials and the training to produce beautiful products like this. And what I notice is that you guys have a global footprint. I mean, it's not just going to South Africa or countries in South Africa. I see this a couple of... South Africa. <laughs> I didn't. Did you just say... Yes, 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 yes. I know exactly <laughs> what I said. There is a country in South Africa. It's Lesotho, right? So technically I'm right, but I won't lie. I didn't think that in the moment. That was a stupid thing to say. It's the sun. Woo, my forehead. <laughs> He's such a diva, isn't he? <laughs> Out of nowhere, suddenly Dean is the makeup person. I have no idea how this happened today, but I'm always trying to help out, right? And I see people are sweating, so I started dabbing and cleaning up faces. Next thing you know, director is calling makeup. What, me? This is my insight. Well, it's fine, he's, he's the official makeup artist now. I don't, I don't know when this started, who agreed on this, but Dean's just pa 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 pa. Just add, add. You got a spot. Dean, yeah. what, what? This That's is my good. diary. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Dean, this is my diary. Where did you even come from? Well, I think we've done enough talking. It's time for me to start weaving. So I'm going to introduce you to Lindy. She's a master weaver. She's been with Gone Rural for nine years, and she's going to teach you a little bit of weaving today. I am so excited. I'm Lindy. How are you? Yeah. May I have a seat? Yes, you can. I, I'm not going to lie to you, I am really nervous. I've never done weaving before. There's a lot more to weaving than I thought. I didn't know that the grass gets dyed. I didn't know that they use little umbrella hooks as needles. Hey, look at that. I'm loving that I'm learning all about this, both from a theoretical point of view, but also hands-on. It seems like I'm not too bad. Uh, so with the thing, uh, Dean is... Uh, I'm doing the closing link over and over and over again. I don't know what is it, like am I dehydrated at this point in time? I just can't get the words to come out purely. It looks like at this rate, I might be a master weaver in no time. Whilst I hang out with Lindy, let's see if Dean Woodman lives up to his name. But eventually we get there. Closing link done and dusted. I've decided to do the carving. I think it will work quite well. Surname's Woodman, play a bit of it, you know? Action. Scattered around this eclectic landscape are wooden art pieces, each unique and interesting in their own form. Those are made by two individual men. Hopefully by the end of today, there'll be three. How are you? How are you? How are you? Excellent. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. I've been walking around and I've been seeing these wooden art pieces everywhere, and I hear that you are the two gentlemen that make these. Wow, yes. true. Open link is done, I'm talking to them, we're getting it going, and Taiwanese tourists come. Now I'm thinking to myself, okay, this can go one of two ways. I go and say, ni hao, and the next thing you know, everyone's like, ni hao, ni hao, hello, hello. And all we want to do is get it done, but at the same time, they tourists that's come to Iswatini, so you welcome them and you smile and you, 
Let them do their thing. <laughs> this is a bit intense now, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's watching <laughs> us now. <laughs> so you got to perform for an audience now, sir. So. Uh, yeah, clearly, eh? Wow. Action. How do you get to such a masterpiece in front of me? This is chakranda tree. It's a soft wood. It's, it's good to, I mean, to work on it, yeah. Okay, so it's in. easier to carve yes. that wood. Yes. All right. I decided not to go in prepared with a lot of questions and rather converse with both of them and find out a bit more about themselves and what they do. Mfanzili, where did you learn this from? I learned it from Shadrach. Shadrach himself? Yes, he's my uncle. Oh, my yes. word. Interesting thing is, doing that allowed me to realize that Shadrach is the uncle to Mfanzile, and he taught him the trade. And Shadrach, how long have you been doing this for? Yeah, my friend, it's uh, about 30 years now. 30 years? Yeah. To come the sweat is dripping down my back. And to make things worse, there's this reflector. It feels like an interview on a sunbed. And from a training perspective, how long did it take to train Mfanzile? Hey, since he was young, my friend, it's a journey again. He, because he grew up in a family of artists, you know, so uh, roughly it's more than in two years, yeah. We've got 20 minutes. It's a little small journey, but I've got Woodman in my blood. So yeah. will you teach me? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. There's one thing that's very synonymous between Cape Town and Iswatini. They use an okapi to carve that wood, man. That's an okapi, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Mm, I know that. It's I know that. Best tool ever, this yeah, one. 100%. That's for finishing, you know. <laughs> Shadrach hands me the knife and he hands me the head yeah. of this woman and she's already beautifully carved and it's my turn and I'm just thinking to myself, man, it takes this guy three weeks wow. to make this art piece and I'm hoping I cannot mess this up. Shadrach, I mean, this is this is quite complex, um, but I think I'm getting the hang of it, eh? Mm, I can see, yeah. So future business, <laughs> ne? Definitely sure. <laughs> no hesitation. <is it? laughs> While I continue to carve away at my future, apparently Tatu is meeting an Eswatini legend. Shadrach. We're going to make money, right? Definitely. <laughs> Segment's done and I feel amazing. The vibe was low and energies were low in the beginning, but we ended off on quite a high note with myself and Shadrick sharing a laugh about making money. That's the only way to make money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Dean Woodman truly lived up to his name? Let us know on social media using the hashtag PresenterSearch on 3. Great talent, great coffee. Simple. See you after the break. You're back with Presenter Search on 3, the Espresso Edition, coming to you from Eswatini. Team 1 seems to have found their groove, but let's see if they can finish strong. I'm leading up to my interview now and my guest has arrived. I am feeling so nervous. I've been a fan ever since he started in the industry and I'm actually a bit starstruck, but I cannot wait for this one. One form of art that will always be universal is music. And today I'm pretty privileged to be meeting hey, somebody. I'm struggling with my opening link and I seem to be sweating a little bit, but the makeup artist is on standby. Can I get makeup? Makeup please. You know, just to make sure that I don't shine, even though it's my time to shine. Not too much. Just da 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 da. Da da da. Shade on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Dean. One form of art that will always be universal is music. And today I've got the privilege to be meeting somebody who has successfully managed to bring across the Swazi culture through music. I'm talking a songwriter, a performing artist. I'm pretty nervous because I'm meeting the one and only Sands. I'm excited. <laughs> Check, check, mic, check, one, two, one, two. Da, 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 da. One, two, one, two. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like you're making a song about me. <laughs> Tato. Yeah, Tato, how are you, bro? <laughs> nice to meet you, man. It's so good to I'm meet good, you. Such yeah. an honor. I yeah, mean, man. a whole entire phase of Swazi music, modern Swazi music, that yeah, is. Man. How does it feel to be you? <laughs> it's got uh, weight on my shoulders, yeah. but then, of course, it's Grace that has put us here, and... Yeah, it feels good though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd feel good as well if my song was to be topping the charts on yeah. radio, you know. But before we get into the music, I want to know about your name, Sands, your stage name, Sands. Where, where does that come from? Okay, my real name is Sands, like Sans oh, is so much. Okay. Okay. So okay. Sands, it might as well as have a relationship with my real name, but then the actual Sands means sand, like. Sand. Actual sand. Actual sand. Deep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. 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 Why sand? The why? Because it's everywhere. I mean, awesome yeah. stuff. And really being everywhere, yeah. and I can see how you're trying to get the Swazi culture everywhere. Yep. The other guys had activities to keep them busy, and I'm only relying on the conversation because I don't have a hands-on experience. So I really have to make sure that I pull through with this interview. 
Right now we are at House on Fire and this is a very iconic theatre mm. and you've performed here before. Yes. What's the significance you know, of this place to you? Well, this is where I first had my first performance okay. Okay. ever in my life. It was this stage where we're standing. And of course, the biggest festival in Swaziland and one of the biggest in Africa mm. is also hosted in this place. Yes. It's, it's more like the, the place <laughs> in Swaziland, the biggest stage in Swaziland. So. Uh, now being really here, you know, at this iconic theatre, I think it would be a, a better way. What a better way could it be to just get treated uh, to... Right, just do it again. Yeah. You were fumbling your words, so you didn't know what to say. Okay. You, you, you go, what, what a better way to end off this amazing day in such an iconic place than a live performance. And then you can say, yes, you go, aha, private gig. <laughs> from SRT number one. Private gig from is <laughs> number one. Oh, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a better way to end off this beautiful day at this incredible place than a live performance. Yeah, thank you. From SRT is number one, so... Oh. Yeah, come, hey, come, come do it again, it's fine. Private gig. From Esotini's number one. Private gig from Esotini's number yes. one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's quite nerve-wracking to do an outro link because I've got a superstar staring right at me to end off this incredible day at this incredible venue, then a live performance. Uh, Okay. No, you let him. You <laughs> let him. Ah, uh, he yeah, mustn't just. Oh, straight to the camera. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. it's he doesn't know what to say. Yeah, okay. He's standing awkwardly. Okay. He's okay. Like, okay. And I also have to interact with the camera at the same time. Superstar, camera, outro link. Guys, this is not an easy job. This beautiful day at this incredible venue, done a live performance. Yeah, a private gig from Esotini's number one. The stage is yours. <laughs> I am not too confident about my closing link. It looked a bit awkward, but the thing is we've done so many retakes already. Yeah, quite frustrating, but hey, at least we got to dance. Hey, funny. We're there, it's the end of the day, and Tatu is going and doing his thing with Sands, and you know what, it's a total vibe. I mean, Nathaniel and I are feeling it, we're off camera, and we just go in there, and we start vibing with Tatu, vibing with Sands. If there's one thing that I know I dismally fail at is dancing, but because the camera is here and I, it's my last chance to at least make the insert work, I have to bring it on. And I'm not really too confident of my dancing skills. I mean, did you see that for sure? Yeah, I was going left, right and center, but it's just not working. Eish. Now I know that people are going to drag me. But hey, for the love of TV, I'll do anything. <laughs> off the day with Sans performing for the three of us, amazing. I feel like we started off the, the, the day amazing with a wonderful synergy and energy and now we end off joining Tato with Sans, he's singing, we singing, tiki tik tik tiri -ri. And I can just feel in that moment, you know, we synced. I didn't think it was going to be. I thought myself and Nathaniel were definitely going to overpower Tato, but man, he brought his A game and we just linked. <laughs> cool. As Team 1 ends off on a high note, Team 2 gets ready to experience the history and traditions of Eswatini. I'm very excited about today. Like, yeah. do you have any expectations Maybe for today? Do my face oh. As I walk into this village, I'm like, wow, this reminds me so much of back home. I'm from the Eastern Cape, and both my parents are from the rural side of the Eastern Cape. And the structures are kind of similar to how we would build our huts. So that was pretty cool. It was like going back home. Hi. Good back home. Oh, welcome to the village by this man, and he is so humble. We welcome you at Mandenga Cultural Village. This home, it belongs to a man with two wives, the children, and the grandmother. When we get to the entrance, culturally, we shout, Ekaya. Ekaya means home. I'll count up to three, then you shout Ekaya, <laughs> so that they too will come <laughs> us to get inside the home. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Ekaya! <laughs> Yes, we do welcome you. You can come join us. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, this is Thank so, you so much. It's beautiful. Oh, that sound alone is so welcoming already. It really is. Oh. 
So team two is turn to do the challenge. Um, we're excited and nervous, but we're ready for it. I think we're gonna bring it. I definitely want to choose something that is relatable, but also different to the challenges I've done before. We all want to do something out of our comfort zone and make sure that we can still bring a, a good insert. I was yes. so excited. Ne? I'm also very excited. I think also we have the cool part of the segment. Yes. We're focusing on the culture and the history of Eswatini. I mean, there's um, interviewing a traditional healer, mm -hmm. right? Um, cooking and dancing. Mm. I really wanted to dance because it's out of my comfort zone. I feel like I've been a lot of mommy things. Yeah. Like, it's always okay, mommy content, so I want to be a bit like lost in voice. In okay, time. and your cooking skills, if she wants Babes, to do that? The most I know how to do is boil eggs, so I don't know how. Maybe there's a traditional oh, what are we doing? egg dish. Come down. I'm going to ask you. Eswatini, today we are making eggs. Cooking eggs, family eggs, doing it all. You cook an egg. So wait, no. you guys are all comfortable. I've never met a Sangoma. Mm. Which is cool because then you have more questions to ask you, literally coming in with an open mind. I'm very You're green. more inquisitive yeah. and... Keep me some of the food, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and you guys must come dance with me. Lons are going to have more fun, right? Definitely, okay. <laughs> 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 Hello, like they say in Swati, Sambonani. Welcome to the kingdom of Eswatini. Today, we get to experience the true taste of the authentic culture and traditions of this royal land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eating, dancing, and all things spiritual coming together right here. Right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> Food is an essential part of any culture. Not only do you get full from your favorite meals, but also it holds a significant part of any tradition. Now, Mshanje, we will be making a traditional Swati dish. I'm so excited. Mm. So, Mshanje, what are we making? Um, we are cooking mm -hmm. bean stew. Bean stew? Yes. So, I see we already have our beans here. Mm -hmm. From this process, what are we doing? Now we uh, are about just to remove stones from the pins. Then stones? Have, yes, some stones. Then... Like which ones? This one. Yes. Oh. These are the rotten pins. Okay, okay, okay. Now what is the importance of this dish? Why is it so true to the Swati tradition and culture? Hmm, it's just our meat, our traditional meat. Really? Yes. What do you prepare with the beans? Prepare the beans with a pot of rice or stamp. I've never really heard of bean stew. I've heard of beef stew, chicken stew. Back home, we eat stamp and beans. So pairing up beans and rice, something very different. How do you make the stamp? Do you first boil the water? Yes, we first boil the water, then we add the beans to the boiling water. Yeah. Thereafter, we have to chop our, our veg, then we add to the beans. To the beans later. So these mm. are our veggies. We have carrots and onions. Yes. Okay, so are we going to chop them now? Yes. Can I help? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one thing I cannot do is chop onions without crying. So I'm going to try my best. <laughs> Okay, so am I doing the right thing, Bof? Yes. <laughs> For you to tell me that I'm a nice chopper girl. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You know what? It actually reminds me so much of home because I'm from the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. And we also use these pots to cook meals. <laughs> for the longest time I've been running for it because it's labor. <laughs> but we come full circle with presenter search on three. <laughs> so exciting. It really is exciting. So Billy, how do you know when it's fully cooked? You maybe take some of them, then when it's slowly. Oh, it's very soft. The Mantenga Cultural Village welcomes people from all over the world. As you can hear in the background, there's joyous singing and dancing. So, Gwangok, we're just chilling, making sure that our bean stew is well cooked. <laughs> the young lady dishes up for me. It's time for me to taste. Stabile, what should I expect in the taste? It's delicious mm -hmm. and it is very nice. So we're using our hands for this, ne? Yes. I can appreciate how people used to live back in the day, but right now I'm just like, oh, I wish I could use a spoon. Okay, cool. So should I just go in? Yes. There I am, <laughs> digging in using my hands. Ah! The experience was, um, yeah. Uh, actually, really like the combination of the beans. Uh, let's do that again. Okay. At this point, I'm like, I'm going to taste this once. And that's it. The director comes to me and is like, Kekute, hey, we have to take another take. I'm like, okay, we can do this. The third time, I'm like, 
you trying me. <laughs> You're trying me. But we went in and it was very delicious, to be fair. I really enjoyed it. It was something very different. I actually really love the combination of the beans and the rice and also the vegetables featuring in there. I'm also surprisingly taken aback by how flavorful it is, considering that we didn't add any spices. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for allowing me in your space, for teaching me how to make a bean stew a true Swazi cuisine. I really, truly enjoyed it in Gwaskapur. Mm, thank you so much. As Team 2 continue to discover the beauty, the culture and traditions of Eswatini, let us know what you think of the contestants on social media using the hashtag presentersearch on three. Great talent, great coffee. Simple. See you after the break. This is the Kingdom of Eswatini. Welcome back to Present to Search on 3, the Espresso edition. Let's catch up with Team 2 as they explore the traditions of this beautiful country. Traditional healing? Let's see how this goes. Eswatini has a deep-rooted connection to spirituality. And right now, I get the opportunity to sit down with the Sangoma to experience traditional healing for the very first time. Let's go. Oh, wow. Okay. This is new. <laughs> I was caught off guard because I didn't know that the entrance of the hut was going to be the size of a pinhole. Let's go. <laughs> Literally, you cannot crawl. I had to figure this out. I was slid in. Oh, wow. And I entered this oh. dark place. I thought I was alone for sure. This is my first time in a Sangoma's hut and I've always heard about ematambo, yes. which is the throwing of the bones. Yes. Um, if you may, can I ask you to ask the Gogos to show us what they're saying? Yes, totally. Fantastic. <laughs> right now, I'm being covered in a traditional cloth. What is the significance of doing this? I tried to engage with the Sangoma and I soon realized that there is a language barrier and I'm thinking, how am I going to deal with this? I have a whole interview to conduct. So I jump in because I can help you. Yeah. Okay, you're going to translate? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You said they're covering you with this cloth just to show a respect because you are not allowed to come with and show your sleeves in this house. In oh, this I house. see. I'm wearing shorts and a shirt. That's yes, not appropriate. Yes. I see. Awesome. I'm learning as I go along. Thank you so much for teaching me. Um, what are the next steps? And then now he's saying he's about to draw the bones as paid for your request. Awesome. It is getting really hot. And part of this whole ritual is that I've got to wear a blanket and I'm sweating and I'm trying to be polite about the situation. I can't exactly be like, <sighs> so as he's talking, I'm just kind of like, okay, it's getting really warm in here. And then he starts burning incense and they bring it to my face and the coals are hot. I can feel the sweat sizzling on my face. I'm a bit jealous of Jamie. Maybe dancing was the better option. Wow. The Sangoma wants to feed me something and immediately my reaction is, hey, what's this? And I oblige, I eat and it's a really weird texture. And you know, you want to be polite in the situation, but at the same time, I'm like, what's happening here? Mm. Oh, I'm not sure what I was just fed, but it has kind of a chalky texture. Mm, I don't really get a flavor. What was it that he fed me? They let you taste that thing so that uh, to welcome you. And oh, uh, wow. briefly, they're doing a ritual for you to unite your ancestors and their ancestors so that their ancestors can help you. Mm. And what is it made of? It's made out of a kind of a soil. And soil. Guys, new things happening right here. I <laughs> think yeah, what Prefat is saying is that the ancestors are saying there's a competition that you entered into. You want, if you agree with that, just say, Togo is a gog. Togo is a gog. Set on a competition, there'll be a little bit of difficulties, but there is a sign of uh, success. I'm completely stunned. Togo is a gog. 
I really feel like I'm connecting to something, an entity. Maybe it's my ancestors, I don't know. This is all new to me. I know that when you want to become a Sangoma, you are either raised um, with the culture or you receive a calling. Can you talk to me about your journey specifically? Oh, we are here. We are some they just like to become a Sangoma, or maybe they inspired by their neighbors who are being on the same road, and then they go for initiation for being a Sangoma. Mm -hmm. But to him, it was a different story because it was a gift. He dreamt about it. Oh, wow. He dreamt about it. That was your calling. Yes. It's amazing. So much has changed when it comes to medicine. Um, has the new developments assisted you in what you do here? Says in their culture, it says you learn until you die. So they're learning a lot from the new technology and the changing of things. So culture seems to be moving along with the times. I want to say thank you for inviting me into your space and for teaching me all there is to know about traditional healing. So from incense straight through to being blessed and acknowledged by my ancestors, I feel completely filled with, uh, uh, no, uh, sorry, I'm uh, uh, getting stuck, I'm trying to come up with a link, that's what I'm playing. I just can't seem to get the sentences right. Uh, what I want to say in my head is not translating, and the director stops me and he's like, hey, listen, get out of your head. You're thinking about this too much, and I know that that's where I'm at right now. I'm over-prepared. Um, to the point where I can't think of any other alternative sentences to close the situation off beautifully. From my side, guys, I've learned so much about myself. This has been absolutely magical, and I urge anybody who has an interest to know more about um, culture in general, come to, to uh, Eswatini and be a part of this amazing experience yourself. I feel like I did the best with what I had. There was definitely a specific way that I saw this playing out in my head. What happened in my head? And what happened in the hut? Completely different. <laughs>
at this stage I'm very worried because my content is not good enough to cover a segment. I have to speak to a gentleman but he's not allowed to speak to any of the women. Um, I think culturally he can't be teaching a female the source of dance. There is the maidens that can Omagi, oh, yes, not the male. No, okay. It's not done. So I asked another lady to join in, hype up, bring up the energy. Now that I've mastered the basic steps, I do want to take it up a notch a bit. What can I do to just spice it up a bit? Okay, you can just lift up your feet, straight up, like... Where am I lifting them to? Show me, show up me. Up to your head, to up. your head, straight to the head. I literally took off my shoes and started dancing, oh, just to let off some steam and make sure that I can still keep it pumped, keep it relevant, and make sure that it's a positive insert. Hey, just, hey, like just like this, just like this. Then try it once again. Your leg back, like this one. Then you hit, here. Yeah? Now, I'm definitely not gonna get this in one try, so I do have to come back, but for now, I'm just gonna live it, live it, and breathe it. Let's do this, and go. Come on, guys, let's get into it. We ended off on a high, we got to dance together, and that is the highlight of my entire segment, jamming with the other two contestants. Myself, Jared and Kutle has an amazing connection. We feed off each other's energy, and we really just have a good vibe together. Hey, 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 hey. South African style, let's do it. It seems like Jamie, Jared and myself are getting really close. We're having so much fun. I think at some point, you know, we're forgetting that this is still a competition and one person still has to go home. Culture, arts, tradition. Who do you think made the most of their time to shine in the Eswatini Team Challenge? Let us know on social media using the hashtag present to search on three. It's your time to shine with Presenter Search on 3 and Orbit Gum. Contestants, it's been a long day. But a big congratulations for completing your Eswatini Team Challenge. Give yourself a hand. And of course, can we just acknowledge our gorgeously well-dressed right. judges, My Dr. Gosh, Musa, Roger Good, glorious. and of course, glorious. the princess, <laughs> Tando Tabeta herself. You're looking stunning in that thank lime you, green, you, girl. Thank you, thank oh, you. absolutely amazing. The landscape is amazing. The sun's about to set. You can see the mountains of Iswatini. It looks beautiful. It's sunset and we have all gathered together for elimination and as much as we're trying to take in the beautiful view but at the same time we're very anxious to hear who's going home. Time has come, we all know that it's got to get here. Tonight we're saying goodbye to one contestant. You know it's elimination but you don't want anyone to go home. I'm just hoping they don't call my name at any point in this competition or at any point in the elimination. The judges have been hard at work. They've viewed all of the raw footage from each one of your inserts. And they have decided that tonight they're picking a bottom three. Dr. Musa, we'll start with you. So, the first person in our bottom three this week is Nathaniel. You don't want to come like so far and then just drop out. I'm really concerned right now. They call out Nathaniel's name and my heart jumps straight to my throat. I mean, we were together, I didn't think he did that bad. And I'm thinking, why? The second person in our bottom three is Jared. My name is called out and I'm starting to get nervous. You know, you want something so badly and you feel like it's slipping out of your hands. I could feel my heart drop because we were working together. And I thought that the challenge actually went really well because we regrouped and we discussed how everything went. So I was just wondering what could have gone wrong. And the third person in our bottom three is Tato. Whoa, first time in the bottom three. I'm going through so many emotions. I don't really know what to expect. Wow. The judges will now give their final feedback, starting with Dr. Musa. Nathaniel, we watched all the raw footage, and the one thing that we agreed on is 
you feel as if you have a very robotic sense of presenting. It is fun at times, we love the jokes, but at times we feel, where is this going to go? What happens if we place you in a scenario where you can't joke around? And we saw it where you were at the center with uh, one of the gentlemen that you were interviewing. We saw that bit, but we want you to be more flexible with your presenting, allow us to see more of you. We know there's more, but you're not giving us that bit. And that's why you're in the bottom three this week. The first comment the judges make is that I'm robotic and they feel like I suddenly go into this presentary zone. Fair, I, I do remember times during the conversation where I might have gone a bit structury, but I can only put it in my back pocket and try and make sure that I just bring myself next time. Jared, you are in the bottom three because we like to find authenticity. There's moments where you are speaking with the girls and I think you were saying Ekaya and even then you were going Ekaya. It felt very over the top, dramatized, not real. And we sympathize with the fact that you had a very difficult challenge in an environment that you're not used to. We still did feel had you found a real you and spoken from a place where other people can relate with, it would have come across as better. Had you got in there and said, I've never been here, I, I actually don't know what happens here. And you know, it's okay to be vulnerable at times and to be honest as to who you really are. So it's just that authenticity and the hands thing that mm. you still do where you do this. It's very presentary still, yeah. which is problematic because you're standing here with, with five other really great people. I can see where they're coming from. It's not an easy task when you are conducting an interview and you still want to be yourself, you know, off camera, you could be vibey, but as soon as the cameras are on, you slip into presenter mode, they call it, or you become the person you think you should be. And that balance is not easy to strike. And I think a lot of the time it feels as if we see the same things every week. And we laugh about when we look at these clips and we're like, there they go again, watch it, watch it. And then you guys and say, you so let me ask you a question. It, and no one speaks like that. So Tando, let me ask you a question. How was sure. your day? No one does that. And, and we just think at some point we, we can't overlook that. At some point we're going to have to do something about it. Tato, firstly, let me give you some positives. You've been getting better and better. Musa and I were saying literally every week we watch you. In fact, at some points we've even said you've got one of the biggest, most likable personalities on this whole set. The problem is a lot of what we watched was raw footage and it got to a point where it was take after take after take after take. Also, out of your group, out of the guys, you were the last to go. You'd had the whole day to work on your links, to pr even practice stuff where it could have been completely rehearsed and we would never have known. I understand everybody had multiple takes, but it got really frustrating after a while. If we have to be really critical, and if you do make it past this, it's something you really need to think about. It's, it's, it's sadly, and I hate to say this to you, it's, it's a level of professionalism. A lot of presenters spend their time preparing for stuff. So everyone knows what's happening the next day. So if you know that tomorrow we're going to Eswatini, we're going to go shoot something, and they say you're doing a cultural village or you're going to go see the arts or whatever it may be, you know what's going to happen. And by the time that the crew is having to retake and redo and it's frustrating to them as well and it just makes the whole day seem much longer. But you're going to get things that are very time dependent and no one has time to watch you try get your things right. It's obviously due to the nerves. I try so hard to calm myself, but with everybody on set and you having to try and enter to the camera at the same time can be quite nerve wracking. Thank you so much judges for the feedback given to our bottom three. It's now time to find out whose time to shine is officially over. The judges have made their decision and the person going home tonight is Jared, I'm sorry, your journey with Presenter Search on three has come to an end. Guys, give him some love there. I'm sad to see Jared go, but I'm glad that it's not my, my name being called out. That was a tough moment to know that my journey has come to an end on Presenter Search. In life, you know, it's not always going to go your way, but I, I'm proud of what I've done thus far. I don't think Jared deserved to go home. He adds a, a different feel to Presenter Search, but because someone has to go home, um, it, it is what it is. Never easy, but unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to one. The journey for our top five, however, continues and it's going to be a tough one because now the heat is officially on. We'll see you next week, South Africa. Good night. I honestly cannot believe that I didn't go home. I felt, based on the judges' feedback, it would have been me. 
very excited for the people standing next to me because they're still in the competition, but feeling a bit sad for myself. You know, this is not the end of me. I, you'll see me on TV very soon. <laughs> you feeling both happy and you're feeling sad. You know that you've made it through and this is a monumental achievement for yourself, but at the same time you're feeling sad for your mates that have just been in the bottom three and the fact that Jared's going home. And I literally had to turn around and look out to the horizon because I could feel, man, it's coming. And the tears were coming. It's your time to shine with Presenter Search on 3 and Orbit Gum. Another feel-good production.